Hey guys, and welcome back once again to The Castaway Couple. So, this weekend, just gone, we got to witness a beautiful wedding for some close friends of ours who are around the same age as us, and we were also lucky enough to help out with some of the videography, and honestly, it was just a really touching ceremony. You know, it was a small, intimate garden wedding in their own home, and it was just spectacular. And you know what? There was something really profound about the entire day. You know, the way that they expressed their love, their commitment, and the pursuit for their future together. It really made me reflect on relationships and marriage, and especially in today's world. Now, I happen to have noticed something recently, and it really seems like a trend, or perhaps even a movement. More and more Western men are choosing to marry Filipino women. And it's not just a coincidence or a phase. It seems like there's something deeper at play. The couple you're seeing in this video is part of that upward trend. An Aussie guy and a Filipino woman. And witnessing their love made me reflect on why this is becoming so common. What's drawing men from countries like Australia, the US and Europe to women from the Philippines? Could it be that something in our Western culture is driving men to seek a more traditional partnership? And more importantly, why might this be a good thing for both sides? At the heart of it, I believe men are drawn to the traditional values that many Filipino women embody. The Philippines is still deeply rooted in its Catholic traditions, where family is central, gender roles are respected, and marriage is seen as a lifelong commitment, not a convenience. These values create a type of relationship that's been lost in much of the Western world. There's a sense of respect for gender roles, roles that have, quite frankly, been demonized or blurred in many modern relationships. But think about it. These roles serve an important purpose. They're not about control or oppression, but they're about balance, okay? Men and women have distinct roles to play in a marriage. And when each person fulfills their role, it creates harmony. The man provides, protects and leads while the woman nurtures, supports and cares for the home. It's how we are wired in the primal sense and it works. This is something that resonates with many Western blokes because whether we care to admit it or not, the modern setup doesn't seem to be working for many of us anymore. And that's men and women alike. So let's contrast that with the West where the focus of relationships seems to have shifted. It's become more about status, financial success, and materialism than about love, connection, and mutual support. See, men in the West often find themselves feeling disposable, valued more for their income than for who they are as people. Western women, driven by consumer culture and societal pressures, are oftentimes conditioned to measure a man's worth by his paycheck and his social status, or even his ability to provide instant gratification. It's all very surface level and shallow, and it's breaking apart the fabric of traditional marriage. When you look at marriage and the reason for marriage, if you go through history, there's lots of books written on the purpose of marriage. And throughout history, if you go way back, what you tend to find is the reason why most people got married was social status or security. You know, this guy had more camels, I'm going to marry him, whatever it might have been, more sheep. There was all sorts of reasons, but the idea of romantic love was not really the primary factor. And then you get to the modern view, what we would call the Hollywood view. And the Hollywood view, although it has some great things to it, I would say has a few holes in it, a few issues. And the Hollywood view will go something like this. I'm looking for my perfect partner. And even though I'm not truly happy now, that once I find that perfect person, everything will be great. Life will be great. So the Hollywood view, or what's known as the modern view of marriage, is I want someone who's going to make me happy. And I don't want them to change me. And although there's some true points to this, it actually sets you up often for failure. And here's the reason why. The problem with the modern view is it puts this pressure on people to have it all together. It puts pressure on people that they are the ones that are truly going to make me deeply happy. But the sad reality is that no person, no matter how great they are, 
will not truly 100% make you happy. And that brings us to the biblical view, where marriage actually originates. And the biblical view goes something like this. It says, no two people are 100% compatible. No two people are perfect. All human beings are broken, or actually the Bible says selfish. On top of that, men and women are different. You mush all of that together and marriage is actually really hard. So what's the biblical view? Well, the biblical view says all those things are true, they're default, which is actually kind of good because it takes the pressure off everybody. It says you don't have to be perfect. In fact, you're not. But that's the whole point of marriage is that the biblical view of marriage is God takes two imperfect people, puts them together and teaches them to love the way God loves. And the Bible's full of this language of loving unconditionally, loving Christ. We often talk of the church as his bride and loving her and dying for her. And so the biblical view would say this, that when you meet that special person, you see in them all the things that you value and you love. You see all the things you value in each other. And what you're doing today is you're signing up to go on a journey together that as you see the potential, you are signing up to speak and act and love into that person, them to their full potential in God. To learn to love them unconditionally, even the times when they're grumpy, the times when they haven't had enough sleep, you're going to love them the way God loves. There's no conditions, unconditionally. And there's a beautiful statement I'll finish on from a book called The Meaning of Marriage by the late Tim Keller, Pastor Tim Keller. He says this, within this Christian vision of marriage, Here's what it means to fall in love. It is to look at another person and get a glimpse of what God is creating and to say, I see who God is making you and it excites me. I want to be part of that. I want to partner with you and God in the journey you are taking to his throne. And when we get there, I will look at your magnificence and say, I always knew you could be like this. I got a glimpse of it on earth, but now look at me. The biblical view takes the pressure of you being perfect and says, we're not. But together with God, you begin a journey of building each other up, speaking, acting, and loving to each other. And that's the beauty of marriage. Now, we, we see this in rising divorce rates, fractured families, and the overall dissatisfaction people feel in their relationships. I'm not saying this is the fault of women. It's a symptom of the culture that we've built. A culture of consumerism, competition, and individualism that prioritizes self over cohesive partnership. And it's a toxic system that's affecting both men and women, making relationships feel more like transactions rather than what should be lifelong bonds. Maybe that's why so many Western men are now gravitating toward Filipino women. In these relationships, they're finding something they didn't know they were missing. A return to roots, a connection with nature, and a life that's less about competition and more about peace, love, and family. There seems to be a growing awareness that the Western way of life isn't healthy anymore. We're chasing things that don't matter. Money, status, likes on social media, while losing touch with what really does love, family, and finding that true inner peace. These men are rejecting the status quo, looking for relationships that fulfill them emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Relationships that are about building a life together, not just about accumulating things. When a man experiences that traditional sense of marriage, a partnership based on mutual respect and defined roles, he realizes just how deeply fulfilling it can be. It gives them a sense of purpose, something many men are craving but don't even know they need, not until they find it. And in watching our close friends getting married, I couldn't help but reflect on how this traditional setup gives both men and women a sense of purpose. When we embrace our natural roles, life feels more balanced, more fulfilling. It's how we were designed to live. The world we've built in the West has led to so much unhappiness and ultimately a pure lack of connection. But there is hope and we're seeing it in relationships just like this one. 
Now, is it possible that more men are waking up to the truth that the Western way of life just isn't cutting it anymore? Are they seeking something real, something grounded in tradition and values that actually stand the test of time? I definitely think so. And that's why we're seeing this rise in relationships between Western men and Filipino women, this epic return to what really matters. So what do you guys think? Have we, in the West, lost touch with what really matters in relationships? Do you see this trend as a positive shift toward more fulfilling partnerships? Let us know in the comments below if you've experienced or seen this shift firsthand. We'd love to hear your thoughts, and until the next one, take care, God bless. You may kiss the bride.